the response of uh, to uh, Sergeant really Willie P, aka uh, Infinite Wisdom, on the uh, video titled "My Transcendent Mind Versus Slave Christianity," and I want to address one point that he uh, made at the uh, at ten minute mark when he was talking about you know the African American uh, identity. Now where I left off in a uh, part one, I was you know talking about my hometown where I'm from. You know, nice size city. You know, we got people from all across the globe who migrate here and whatnot. And I was saying that, you know, we had a large contingency of uh, Africans here, you know, from uh, <clears throat> Ghana, uh, Ethiopia, Kenya. I've met uh, Tanzanians, uh, Somalians, Eritreans, um, Congolese, uh, South Africans, um, uh, Nigerians. Uh, Senegalese and uh, yeah uh, shout out to the librarians too man back when I was like in my mid 20s it was this uh, African shop around the way from where I was living and I would frequent there you know for my uh, certain certain things like black soap shea butter man shout out to the librarians man they, they've been good to me but um but what I'm saying is you know, all throughout my 20s, you know, after I dropped out of college, my late teens, I wanted to try my hand at, you know, different ventures here and there and whatnot. And um, I needed to fund that with, you know, capital. So I hopped into the workforce. I met a lot of people from various walks of life. And uh, even in my personal life, friends of friends and whatnot you know, befriended people from different walks of life, especially Africans. And I met Africans, befriended Africans, you know, met Africans through friends of friends. And uh, due to my uh, Caribbean heritage on my father's side, I delved into uh, the Caribbean culture. And where I started was, you know, aside from researching history on the Pacific, on a specific uh, country in which uh, my father's people are from and, and you know being knowledgeable on that I, I dolved into reggae and uh, you, you know where you see where you got to start when when you start listening to reggae Bob Marley and the Whalers all the golden CDs you know what I mean and uh, all I heard in all those CDs is Africa this Africa that so you know it's a couple of Afrocentric bookshops around here and you know, I went there, picked up a couple of books, a couple of African books, and uh, got knowledgeable on uh, Africa and uh, what it means to be African. Like um, you know, books like from Babylon to Timbuktu, you know, the destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams, uh, the uh, archaeological book. Um, I don't even know if I said that right. By Chancellor, I mean, uh, called Black Genesis. And um, what really got me started on that was um, my last semester, the first time around when I was in college, I had this uh, communications class. And this this old white dude, hippie looking dude or whatever, he said, you know what? We don't never talk about Africa enough. So your last speech, I want you to pick an African country, research it, and give a speech about it. And I, you know, really didn't know, but I picked the country Tanzania, and you know, I talked about the mad, the the Magi and whatnot, and gave a speech on that, and that really got the ball rolling on my um, research on just you know African cultures and whatnot. So um, all throughout my twenties, you know, I'm, I'm running into Africans, I'm meeting Africans, you know. And, um, you know, going to African clubs out here and whatnot. And I used to argue with them all the time. Man, I'm an African. I'm an African. And I'll never forget it. I was working with this gal. She was from the Central Republic of Congo. Not the Congo in West Africa, but the Congo that's, that was uh, colonized by the Dutch. Landlocked smack dab in the middle of the continent. And uh, we're arguing, and she's like, no, you're not. You're not African. You're not African. I'm like, yes, I am. Yes, I am. And uh, she said something that really didn't hit me until, like, almost nine years later. She said, okay, if you're African, 
what tribe are you from? And right there, she just shut me down. I couldn't say nothing. I was like, she got me. And I was mad. And I just, you know, but it didn't hit me until later, until, you know, the tribe that my mother's side of the family kept telling me kept popping up. And then when I started researching my American heritage, it all started to make sense. And um, I got a close friend of mine whom, whom I went to high school with, and uh, he married this uh, this East African gal. And, you know, we would be up in the house watching the game and whatnot. Let's say we're watching the Bulls or whatever, and Luau Dang is playing. And she's like, oh, there goes my African brother, Luau Dang. Every time it was an African on television, she made sure that she made a clear distinction between Africans and Americans. And she used to tell us all the time, you guys are not African. You are not African. And I'm like, what do you mean we're not African? You are not African. And so when I started coming to this knowledge about, you know, really, I've, I've been in the knowledge of, you know, our ancestry and whatnot, but when I started accepting it as truth, I started going around, and when I would meet Africans, I would ask them a, a very specific question, not the second generation Africans, but the first generation, the ones who came over here from Africa, not the ones who their parents came over here, but the ones who came over here, I would ask them this specific question, and I, I asked the Nigerian this question, and I asked the Ugandan this question, and they both had the same answer. I said, um, this transatlantic slave trade thing, in your country, in your Pacific tribe, is there any oral history about the Atlantic slave trade? And they tell me no. So I mean, so my question after that is, so you mean to tell me that, you know, this transatlantic slave trade thing didn't happen? And they say, yeah, it didn't happen, you know. And if you ask many Africans, they will tell you, hey, this transatlantic slave trade thing is is false. Some of them will tell you, but some of them like the, the elevated position that they have within the black community under the illusion that we all came over here on slave ships from Africa. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's like a mystical allure that certain African Americans have towards Africans and like, well, we're from Africa. You know, we came or our ancestors came over here four hundred years ago and you guys have been living there for the past, you know. So it was like I don't know. It's it's they they, they get elevated to almost a godlike state, whatnot. But if you ask some of them will will be square with you and they'll let you know like y'all didn't you know, y'all didn't come over here from Africa. Which, which brings me to another point. And um, one thing when I was in this history class, History 121 class, and I'm learning about, you know, from Columbus to uh, the Reconstruction, um, Britain at the time, they had two uh, major problems during the colonization of North America. Number one was they had too many people in their country. The country was overpopulated. Number two, they didn't have enough workers to work the colonies here in America, right? So how do you kill two birds with one stone? You, uh, you get the lower rung of your population and you force them into indentured servitude to come over here and work. And it's real slick because if you think back in middle school, high school, even in college, all the history teachers, they just really gloss over the indenture, the white indentured servitude part and go straight to slavery. They was like, yeah, and there was some white server, there was some white indentured service and Kunta Kinte. And they expound weeks on, you know, letters written by African slaves and you know the transatlantic slave and all this other stuff. And you're like, wait a minute, wait, you 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 spent ten minutes talking about indentured servitude. You just glossed over that. Now you want to get straight to this? It's something is more to it. 
and another thing that, that stuck out to me during uh, my history class that I learned was um, the money problem. The crown had money problem. They were strapped for cash. They didn't have enough money. They, they barely had enough money to keep the colonies that they had over here functional. So how then do you have enough money to build thousands and thousands of ships and man those ships with thousands and thousands of men to go down to Africa and capture and or buy African slaves? They would have gone into bankruptcy. Now, the, the popular belief is that, you know, Europeans went over there to West Africa and bought 500 slaves for a couple barrels of rum and some glass beads. But upon further examination of African history, you will find out that the Africans were not stupid. You're not just going to go over there and buy scores of people for some so trivial as a barrel of rum and some glass beads. I mean this is the same region that is home that was once home to the great Mansa Musa and the great universities of in, in Timbuktu. These people knew what they were doing. They knew commerce. They've been trading with the Arabs for centuries. They understood the concept of supply and demand. If you have a supply and there's a demand, you know, you can jack up the price accordingly. So if one was to 